It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, to worship the Lord. You know, as we had early morning prayer, we were reminding ourselves of the maternal heart of God, right? That God created the mankind, male and female, in his image. And so that mother heart is in God, that he desires to have compassion over us, to be gracious and kind to us. And uh, I was reminded of what Jesus said when he looked over Jerusalem and the people. And it says in Matthew chapter 23, uh, verse 37, Jesus says this in red letters, How often I have wanted to gather you children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. That is Jesus' heart, that he desires to gather us together as his children, as a mother hen. And so um, I just want us to enjoy that as we worship the Lord together, that it's us giving him honor, right? Today we give honor to our mothers, but in a sense we're giving honor to that maternal part of who God is, that he longs to gather us, to protect us under his wings, to guard us, um, and just to, to love on us. And so would you honor the Lord today, but also receive the love of the maternal heart of God? So let's stand and let's get ready uh, to worship the Lord. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for a day set aside to honor our mothers, to remember all that they have poured out into us, God, that they have sacrificed. They have done so much for our benefit. They have laid down their lives for our own gain. And so, God, we thank you that it's a, a great representation of who you are as our Father, as our God in heaven, that you love us, that you take care of us, that you open up the heavens and pour out blessings in our life. So we thank you, God. We want to honor you today, but we also want to receive as a good child, to receive your protection, receive your love. So would you be faithful to your word today as we exalt you, as we lift you on high? Would you inhabit the praises of your people? We love you. And all God's people said, amen. We worship you, Lord. We wait for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you.
mighty river flow, Lord. Let your mighty river flow, God. Oh, will you fill this house, Lord? Fill our praise, God. Fill our praise with your heart, Lord. With your heart, God. Oh, let our praise be our heart song, God. Let our hearts intertwine with yours, Jesus. Let our hearts know your heart more, God. Our soul, bless the Lord. Soul, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for who you've called us to be, God. You call us your children. You call us your own. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Yeah. Who is free? We are free. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, you sing. Free at last, ransom deep. Oh, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. against me I am who you say I am chosen I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me, you are for me not against me God, 
Thank you for your promises, Lord, that are renewed every single day. Every single day, Lord. Your faithfulness, Lord, has no end. Your mercy, your grace poured out upon your children, Lord. Sweeter every day, sweeter every day. God wants our hearts. He wants to know our hearts even more. Lord, take our lives, Lord. Know us, Lord God. Come have your way, Lord. Come have your way, Jesus. Speak your truth, Lord. Speak your love.
to fear, but it's a process of releasing those fears to be rooted in God and Christ in all areas. And fear tries to hook into each one of us in different ways, different things that the enemy knows. And so just as we sing that, I just want to encourage you to declare that in an area where you may feel fearful, but declare the truth of God's word, that perfect love casts out all fear. And when our roots go deep into the soil of God's God's marvelous love, then there is no fear because it is drowned in his perfect love. So just as we sing this chorus, uh, maybe a few more times, I just want to encourage you to declare the truth. It's not singing a lie, but it's declaring a process of, of releasing the fears and not allowing them to have a stronghold in our life and to trust and to be deeply rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. I'm no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God. I'm no longer as we walk in that, that we would continue to partner with you, that we would recognize the fears that are in our lives, God, but that we would surrender them to you, that in that fear we would choose to trust in Jesus Christ, the only one who is worthy of all that we are, of our praise, of our adoration, but of our trust, that we can put our trust and our hope in you, Jesus. So show us how to walk this out in Jesus' name. You 
that's waiting for you because there's a banqueting table prepared for you right now let go of those cares because he'll take them from you right now let go of those crowns because he's the one worthy right now and he'll never let you go you'll never let me go God For his goodness sake, for his name's sake, he won't let you go. You may feel like that one of the 99, but he's not going to let you go right now. <laughs> he's been chasing after you right now. He's been following you for a while, and you're like, oh, there you are, Jesus. You've been chasing me this whole time. Let go of those cares. Let go of those crowns. Let go of the, 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 the blessings that this life has, because you're going to find so much more so much more in Jesus 
and then those things. God, you, you want us to return to first things first, our first love. The one who knew us from before. Jesus. And you know where we're going to. up worship talking about how Jesus said like a mother hen he wants to gather us under his wing that it, it's his desire that we would draw near to him and as Nick was speaking I just I couldn't help but think of one of our missionaries Rebecca Mende post on Facebook this last week on Mother's Day and it was this video of a hen protecting her chicks a hawk had just landed right by the nest and this mother hen went crazy and just started attacking the hawk and the hawk was just kept backing up and finally the hawk left because the mother hen even though those chicks went under her wing she went on the offense and she started attacking the enemy and the bible talks about it like a, a mother bear right don't rob a mother bear of her cub right dumb thing to do and there's something about that 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 maternal heart of god that he desires for you to come under his wing but even when we stray even when we disobey, he's a good enough God that he's going to come after us. He's going to leave the 99 to come after the one, you and I. He's in a sense, he's jealous. He's violent, like a mother, violent in getting us back. And that's just such a good reminder of who God is for us, that he loves you. He loves you, right? No matter what the enemy tells you, you're a child of God. He loves you. And just to hear, I just feel like the Lord is saying, as you sing that today, I am a child of God that you can't say that with enough confidence and boldness and healthy pride because he loves hearing it. He loves hearing it. So thank you for worshiping with us this morning. God bless you guys. Would you say hi to one of those around you? If you see a mother around them, tell them happy Mother's Day. Well, good morning again. If you could help find your way to a seat, that would help us move on with the service. Good to see a lot of good faces I haven't seen in a while. There's some of you I haven't seen in a, a long while. So welcome, welcome. Happy Mother's Day. I, I can't give a shout out to everybody, but I, get a, I gotta give a shout out to a mother out there that Pastor Larry saw could do, uh, Claudine Candlish. It's good to see her in the house. I haven't seen her in a long time. So, um, in fact, we'll do it now. Can we have all the mothers stand? You probably just sat down. But all the mothers stand. Let's pray a blessing and, uh, over all these mothers. Man, it is good to have you guys in the house. Oh, yeah. No, just mothers. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Well, thank you. I, like I said, maybe not all of you are my mothers, um, but you guys have um, a natural born child, but you guys are also spiritually mothers to others. And so I just want to encourage you and thank you for all of your sacrifice. I know um, I am so glad I'm a dad, not a mom, um, but there's blessings in being a mom as we talked about who God is, that you reflect part of who God is Sometimes even better than us dads, right? We always talk about the father heart of God, but there is something about a mother that reflects the love and the compassion and that violent, there's a talk about that mother bear, right? There's something that you guys just reflect who God is in, in such a beautiful way. And so just wanted to honor you on this special Mother's Day and pray a blessing over you. So if you could just stretch out a hand towards a mother near you and let's pray a blessing over these mothers today. God, we thank you for today. We thank you that we have a special day to think about and remember and honor all that our mothers have done for us. So we pray a special blessing over each one standing here today. God, those that are joining us online, I just pray that you would bless them, God, that they would receive your favor, your kindness, your extra dose of strength, God. It's your joy that gives us strength. So I pray that you would infuse them with fresh joy, just as the, the first day they became a mother and the joy of holding that child in their arms. God, I pray that that same joy would be set before them, God, that they would know that you have purposes and plans yet ahead of them, and that you would sustain them by your right hand, God, that you would encourage them as we spent time in worship, God, that you would continue to remind them that they are a child of you, God, that you are a good mother over them. So we thank you for them, and we honor them this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So what's going on around here? You guys, if you haven't, you should check out our website. Chelsea does a great job of updating all the things, events, and stuff that's going on around here. Um, but coming up next Sunday, uh, we're doing something I don't think we've ever done here at Osborne, um, but we're calling it Compassion Sunday. This year, our theme has been Compassion. Um, but next Sunday, we're calling it Compassion Sunday because we are highlighting a ministry called Compassion International, and you will hear a whole lot more about it next Sunday. But just to whet your appetite, it's an opportunity for you to get rid of poverty, to be like a mother or a father um, to a child. You can adopt a child without having them to come into your own house, um, that you can adopt a child. Jen and I have done this for, I don't know, probably 20 years. We've had different children through Compassion International. And so um, there's just a quick little video that we're going to show uh, to whet your appetite, and then next Sunday you'll hear more. God wants us to help other kids so we can make a difference, so that people in other countries have exactly all that we, they need. They need food, water, and medical service, and shelter. We can all show kids the love of Jesus, sponsor a child, and make a difference. Just to whet your appetite, but for... Again, this isn't an official ministry that Osborne has adopted, and whatever, but it's an opportunity for you, uh, I felt it was important on Mother's Day, to an adopt a child. All of us can be, in a sense, a mother. I know I'm male, I'm not female, but in a way, I can be motherly. I can be someone who cares and has compassion over others. And so this theme of compassion out this year, there needs to be practical applications of that. So I encourage you, be praying, be ready to see what God might be speaking to you uh, next Sunday, Compassion Sunday. Um, Following that, so two weeks from today is actually Pentecost Sunday, um, and we will be, I'll be giving a message on Pentecost during the morning, but in the evening, we will have a special service at 6 p.m., and I want to encourage you to come on out because it will not be live streamed. So if you're joining us online right now, um, unfortunately, you won't be able to join us Sunday night because it's a special service in-house only. Uh, and so I encourage you, we are going to be Pentecostal. We are a Pentecostal church. We're non-denominational, but we believe in all the gifts, and we uh, want to encourage you, um, if that's something you would like to move in and you're not afraid of, come on out Sunday night. Uh, we will uh, just uh, allow the Holy Spirit to move in this place in a powerful way. So I encourage you to get ready for um, Pentecost Sunday in two weeks. Um, before Pentecost Sunday, on May 18th, on a Tuesday, we will have an opportunity to anybody who wants to get vaccinated. Um, we will have some nurses and people here giving the vaccine on our property. And uh, so that's just an opportunity for anyone who would like to get that. It's open to our community. It's a uh, walk up. You can uh, get an appointment or you can just show up. And uh, we've got plenty of that. So anyways, if you would like to hear more about that or know more about that, you can go on our website and get more details and information on that. 
Um, I think the last thing is, uh, announcement-wise, is just making sure you guys are aware that um, I called it VBS last Sunday. It is VBS, but we call it Osborne Kids Camp this year. We're trying to get as much freedom as we can uh, and not call it a school, because uh, sometimes schools have different restrictions in our religious services. So we're calling it Osborne Kids Camp. You can register. I just found some more families were registering last week, so it's good to know. But spread the word. Make sure your neighborhood knows, your neighbors, your cousins, anybody who would like to. It doesn't have to be part of Osborne. You can go to, I know some kids that go to like five VBSs during the summer. They just go from church to church to church, and you're welcome to join, make this a part of it. Uh, and so uh, we just love what God does here that week of VBS, or Osborne Kids Camp, Osborne Kids Camp. Um, so uh, yeah, be excited about that. Um, I have been doing that. Last Sunday, people were scared because I'm doing our missionaries at the end. I'm going to pray for our missionaries and our tithing offering at the end. And so this Sunday, um, our prayer focus is for Keith and Maya Durkin. Uh, they're down in Mexico, specifically Tijuana. They've kind of been in different places in Mexico, but for the last several years, they've been in Tijuana, and um, they have a ministry. It's in, incredible. I've stayed at their home. I've seen some of their ministries. They have an outreach um, to lots that's going on there. They have a resource center, and so they give out food. Um, all the migrants uh, that are coming from other countries that are coming up to the border and are denied, um, they are ministering to them, sharing the gospel, but uh, just giving practical resources and really reaching out to people. They're, um, they call it RED because it's almost like the red light district in Tijuana. They're going to the places where there is um, what we don't like to talk about, right, prostitution and all the child stuff that's just we don't like talking about in a nice sanctuary like this, but they are dealing with those children, those females, and they are rescuing them. They are loving on them. And so they are in the midst of where the enemy can be attacking and coming against them. They've had threats on their lives. They've had all kinds of things. So we just want to make sure that we're praying for them, that they have all the resources they need and that they have God's protection, that they have wisdom, but also boldness. I love that Peter and John, right, after the day of Pentecost, the very next day, they go up to the Temple Mount, they're preaching the gospel. And what happens because of that, man, People get healed, people become to know the Lord, but they get physically beat and threatened. And as they come back and meet with the other disciples, their prayer isn't, oh, pray for our safety. What was their prayer for? Born boldness, more boldness. We were bold today, we want more boldness tomorrow. And that's what I believe Keith and Maya. Of course they want our prayers of protection, but more than that, they want God's boldness. They want to make a difference. And so um, we're gonna pray for Keith and Maya and then pray over our tithe and offering. And so just reminding you, um, you can give online, you can give on that little white pillar in the back uh, anytime during worship. When you come in, when you leave, you can drop off your tithe and offering in that little slot back there. So we will pray over Keith and Maya and our tithe and offering. Lord, we just thank you for today. Uh, we thank you that uh, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you that your faithfulness has been seen in Keith and Maya's ministry. God, that they have been moved around. God, that your hand has put them in different situations, but they always remain the same. Faithful to sacrifice, to pour out, to treat others better than themselves. So God, I pray that you would give them boldness. You give them fresh vision. God, fresh opportunities. Lord God, that you would give them favor. Lord God, with city officials. Lord God, with other ministries. God, that they would work hand in hand. Lord God, that there would be no conflict uh, amongst uh, the body of Christ working there in Tijuana. God, I pray that you would during this whole last year of COVID, God, that they used to have teams come down month after month and they've been limited. God, I pray that you would open up the windows of heaven. As we sang that this morning, God, that they would lack no good thing, no resource would be withheld from them. God, that every time they pour out onto the, onto the needy and the, and the hurting and the broken, God, that you would supply like you did for that widow. God, their oil would never run dry. God, they would continue to, to minister out of the overflow. God, that you would continue to fill them afresh and anew. So I pray this Sunday, even right now as we're praying, they would fill a freshness of your spirit, of your favor, of your strength, of your joy, of your peace. God, that you would supply all that they need, God. So we pray a blessing over them in Jesus' mighty name. God, I pray a blessing over the tithe and offering as each one of us purpose in our heart to give back to you. God, to give you the tithe that you deserve, the, the offering out of the abundance of our heart, God, the joy that it is to give to you. God, I pray that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, that you'd cause this church to be good stewards, that your gospel would go to the ends of the earth, God, that we'd know how to reach the, to Jerusalem, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, God, that we would be found faithful. So God, I thank you that you put it in this church's heart and in our culture to be a blessing, you have blessed us to be a blessing. God, may your gospel go forth in a powerful way from this place. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Well, I have the privilege of giving you announcements two Sundays in a row because it's been a while, but for two Sundays in a row, I'm not preaching. We got to hear from Pastor Jake last Sunday, and this morning we get to hear from Pastor Nick. So would you give a round of applause to Pastor Nick as he comes on up? I want to say uh, Happy Mother's Day to my wife, my mom who's watching. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers and uh, mothers-to-be. Amen. 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 Um, mothers in the natural and mothers in the spiritual. Mothers in the flesh and mothers of adoption. Uh, yeah, I see us growing in numbers spiritually, physically, and by adoption. So, uh, Lord, yeah, let's just pray. Father, thank you so much for your whole big grand plan. Like you, you've, got this all, you've got this whole thing all figured out. And uh, we can trust in you. We can trust you, God. And thank you for instituting the, the family, God, a mother, and a father, and children, God. And so we pray that you would bless, bless mothers, bless fathers too, but bless, bless the mothers Lord, as, they, as they adopt, as they disciple, and as they mother. <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we got some slides, or at least one. Yes, there we go. Um, yeah, so if you go all the way to the very end of your Bible, unless you have a study Bible, it's probably about a third of the way to the end. Uh, but if you go to your, the end of the New Testament, let's see, I have to find the new end of the Bible, it's funny. <laughs> it says, surely I'm coming quickly. Jesus, in it's red letters. Jesus said, surely I'm coming quickly. That, that's kind of a closing point. It's the closing point of the Bible, right? But I want this to be, I feel like the, just like a, something that we look, at, we look unto, right? Because right now, there's a lot of garbage going on in the world, right? Whether it's, I could, I could have a laundry list, and I may or may not go through it. But anyway, there's a laundry list of garbage, that we are presently going through as a people on the earth. Um, there, there's things that are going on in our personal lives. There's things even going on against our church, or against the body of Christ. There's just stuff going on all the time. But Jesus is coming quickly. He doesn't just say, I'm coming quickly. He says, surely, I'm coming quickly. <laughs> so it's going to be okay. One of the things... What did Jesus say was the most important thing? Love. To love. That's right. To love. Mothers are, are great lovers. <laughs> um, I think about some of the mothers I know, and I'm not going to say them by name, but uh, I know even, I would make it equivalent to like a lioness, right? Lionesses are fierce at times. So you, you can see a mother can be very strong, but you also see mothers can be so tender and compassionate. And, you know, I've witnessed that in probably all the mothers in my life. Um, but where were we? You know, there's, what, what is important? What is important? Love, right? Even in worship, you know, it, 
that we ought to come back to the first thing that's most important. To love God. And you can go there if you want. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. To love God. To love the Lord your God. Personalize it. To love the Lord your God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, to love God. And the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the, I think the second is kind of like two things in one, right? You should love your neighbor, but how can you love your neighbor unless you love yourself? And these things that happen in our life, they, I think they attack these things right here. Loving the Lord your God, right? We can love, we can put somebody in front of the Lord, right? That's an idol. We can put a job, a profession, a, a, a leisure activity, we can put that in front of God. We can put football, football in front of God. <laughs> yes, we could do that. Um, you can put anything you can put anything in front of God, you know. There's things that attack individuals, right? The beta Satan, John Bevere, he wrote a book. I didn't read the whole thing, but I got I, we studied it here at church. Um, the enemy comes to to bring offenses, right? And then when we when we grab onto that offense, it's like a bait, and we just got we're like a fish that got hooked. The big one. He's like, Oh, I got the big one. And I, I, apart from God, that's like the biggest area that I feel like we struggle in, right? Like, I might see you or hear a comment from somebody, and now I don't like that person anymore. And the enemy just crept in that, that easy. Now I have a stumbling block in me loving others. And loving yourself, you know, I've, I've been on this wagon before, right? If you, if you are per, a person who's performance oriented, when you mess up, you just like really get on yourself, and you can't, you can't. Oh, I can't believe I did that again. I can't believe I did that again. I got to do better. And so your, you know, your relationship with God is just how good you are, and that's a, that's a pretty bad spot to be, because it's not about how good you are. It's about how good He is, and you just. Our love is an expression of what he's done for us because it says, I don't have the reference, I'm sorry, but if you're watching online, you can throw it in the comments. I'm sure you guys know it. And it's in 1 John. It's in 1 John. We only love because he first loved us. Right? So we can only love God because he first loved us. We can only love others because he first loved us. We can only love ourselves because he first loved us. Oh, I need some water. Excuse me. I love this. This is a YWAM bottle. Reminds me of my daughter, uh, who's not a mother. (laughs) She will be, I'm sure, one day, Um, at least in the spiritual sense. And maybe in in other senses, too. But um, she's actually on her way to go to Mexico uh, for a missions trip, like, if you guys don't know, my daughter is a missionary through YWAM, and um, she's was at the Oregon base, Salem, Oregon base, for I want to say three years or so now, uh, staffing. And she's on vacation, and she went to see one of her YWAM buddies in Texas, and they were at a rally, and says, you know, she's like, oh, we're going to Mexico. I'm like, Mexico, that's a, that's a scary, um, and, and, you know. I'm like, as a dad, I'm like. Mexico. I mean, you guys just heard what was on the screen here, right? So, but I don't know. That's a kind of a little tangent struggle. But uh, no, I I trust that she knows what she's doing. So, um, and that 
she'll be she'll be just fine. So, you know, but I, I just love that example. Like she's loving, she's loving God, she's loving others as she loves herself. Hmm. The number 40 came up, right? I feel like I heard, I don't know where I heard it, but I, I heard it. And uh, 40, years. 40 years, yeah. You know, you can just uh, read this Bible, right? You can read the Word of God and any breeze on it, right? But you can also read the Word of God and, and you just gain knowledge too. So you need more than just reading the Bible to cultivate this kind of love because we don't just want to intellectually love God, right? There, there's, something, there's something else out there, something really big else out there. Uh, and so I guess since the, the number 40, it reminds me of Moses, right? Moses, he had kind of three sections of 40 in his life. And... Um, Moses had experiences with, with, with God. Moses asked to see God's glory and he saw it. Hey, buddy. <laughs> um, Moses had something special with God that we can have. I want to show you something, right? I'm sure you guys know most of the story. Moses is probably, it's a very uh, famous story of the Bible, right? It's Exodus, you know, it's, uh, he spent 40 years as a prince of Egypt. He spent 40 years as a fugitive on the run, and then he spent 40 years in the wilderness, right? But uh, he, he spent time in the presence of God. And that's what changed his life. He, he saw something. He saw a flicker out in the evening, in the dark. And it was God's presence. And he, he went to it. And he realized he was in God's presence. And it talks about, I don't have the reference for that either. Sorry. This is going to be a little loose, so forgive me. Um, but I promise you it's in here. You have to read it for yourself, too. (laughs) Homework. Um, Song of Solomon. And Moses talks about that God put him in the cleft of the rock, right? God put him in the cleft of the rock. Now, I want to just put a, a quick disclaimer on the Song of Solomon. There's different ways you can read the Song of Solomon. But I want to tell you, it starts out the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. This is the number one song of any song. And Jesus, after he rose again, he told the disciples how all of scripture was about him. So this can be read that Jesus, where it's Jesus relating to the bride of Christ. And so I just want to read a little portion in chapter two. And I think this is like, This has come up several times just in the last months for me. But he's saying in verse 10, My beloved spoke and said to me, this is him talking to the bride, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Amen to that. The flowers are appearing on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. It's springtime, the winter, the cold, the hard, it's over and gone. And I think that's even a little prophetic for the season where, you know, like COVID is over and it's, it's, it's going away. Like we see, we, see the, we see the springtime, we see the buds going that says COVID's going to be gone. We see, you know, maybe not in this specific area in California, Los Angeles, but you're starting to see in other parts of the country that regulations are lifting because its effects are over and gone. And we'll get there too. I'll be the, I'll be the first to throw this in the fire. <laughs> <clears throat> the, 
the fig tree puts forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is intensely personal, right? I'm going to even pause there and go back to verse 1. Or verse 2. That he would kiss you with the kisses of his mouth. And if you're this, this is the first time you're hearing this as a male, it might sound a little weird to think about like that. But his blessings come from his mouth. His, his, his blessings, his, the, the love, the, how he speaks to you where in your heart, where you need it. He knows how to get to you. He knows exactly what you need to hear. Because his love is better than wine. Do you have a relationship with God where you know his love is better than wine, than any earthly thing on this place? That, that's why when you have this love, you can love God and love others and love yourself. Because when you know that his love is better than wine, you know where to go to get it. He wants to see you. He wants to know you. He wants to talk to you in the secret place. A few verses down. The king has brought me into his chambers. That's a really personal, that's a really interesting um, way to talk about it. Because, I mean, you know what's happening. But it's intimacy. You know, I think part of, sometimes when we read this, you think about it as a male and a female getting married. And I, th- I would definitely agree that's here. But you got to look a little bit deeper because there's something so much, there's much more treasure buried than just a story of a husband and wife. There's so much more. And there's an intimacy that he wants each one of us to have. And that's why, like, the, the, the treasures of this earth, the, the blessings, the the good meal you have coming in about 25, 30 minutes, which is great, by the way. Go do it. Have, have fun. But let him, into, let him there. Because when you have this kind of intimacy, it's going to flow out into all those things. It's going to flow out. It will change everything. Because if you don't have this, it's going to be hard to love God as he loves you. It's going to be hard to love others. It's going to be hard to love yourself. But when you know and you're intimately equated with his love, it's like you're, you're found in the secret place. You dwell in the secret place, Psalm 91. When you dwell in the secret place. And I've been thinking about that. I live at my house, but I don't, I'm not at my house right now, but I'm still covered, and I still live there. And so I want you guys to hear that. God wants you, all of you, he wants to have an intimate connection with you, and you're going to go out and come back in. You're going to face struggles, but you're going to overcome. You're going to, it's not all going to be great, like all the laundry list that I didn't go through. You're going to have those things, but it'll still be okay, because when you know his love is better than wine, you know this too shall pass. (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Um, this morning in prayer, there was a rooster. Uh, and I think it was annoying, right? Because you closed the door. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, there was a rooster. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it went like eight times. And then finally, Pastor Ryan closed the door. I'm like, what? But I was thinking about this, right? When we think about the rooster, what do you think of? Peter, Peter, Peter right? You think about well, I think about Peter, and whoever just said Peter thinks about Peter, too. Um, and it's a negative connotation, right? Peter, Peter blew it big time. I don't know if any of us would have done differently. I don't know. I don't think I'm better than Peter. I mean, I haven't walked on water yet. <clears throat> But even, even in that, like, right, like, you think about Peter, I feel like the enemy was just, like, there, like, ah, you know, we think about stuff in the wrong connotation, right? But uh, what do roosters signify? They signify the morning. They signify a new day, you know? And what does the Bible say about days? That this is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're not going to be hung up over yesterday's 
really messed up faults. You know, it did it. And even, even in that, even in Peter, Peter walked on water, right? Can you imagine that? Peter, Peter walked on water. Like, okay, it's like, it was foggy this morning. We're out in the ocean. He's, he's out on the boat. It's like, yeah, it's all crazy, foggy. And it's like, somebody's out there. He's like, hey, is that you, Jesus? If, well, if it's you, tell me to walk on the water and I'll come. He's like, all right, come. Peter walks on the water. Peter walked on water. He did supernatural when he kept his eyes on Jesus. That's good. But even in that, that did not, when Peter denied Jesus face to face, like Pastor Ryan was saying, like he, they locked eyes. When the, after the rooster, they looked at each other. I can't imagine what that felt like. I mean, I've done wrong things, and like my mom or dad comes home. And, I mean, that's probably n- nowhere in comparison, right? You're just like your whole, like your energy just leaves, right? You're like, oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> When you're, it's like, you know, you, when you, you really messed up and then you get caught, you're just like, you just feel like nothing. Like, you're, almost like your life is gone and you're just waiting for the punishment. But Peter, Peter royally screwed up on, on epic proportions. But it didn't cancel out God's plans for him. He would go on to heal people. He would go on like, I think it was his shadow. Would, they would walk by. His shadow would heal people. Um, he was the rock that, that the church was built upon. That the gates of hell would not prevail. Um, but before that, what, what happened? He had to experience Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. He had to realize that he still could love God with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. Could you imagine that? Like, I don't know. Okay, I'm back 2,000 years ago, and I'm, like, number 13. (laughs) Somebody's on. (laughs) I'm number 13. I'm the 13th man. Isn't that the Seahawks thing, I think? Eh, Whatever. I'm the 13th guy. I'm the 13th, you know, disciple. And uh, Jesus telling us that he's going to be going to the cross and he's going to have to experience stuff. And he's like, by tonight, you're all going to turn away. Um, and then the guards come. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a sobering thought, right? I mean, praise God he picked me for today. We have a whole host of other things to deal with today. Um, but I, I don't know what I would have done. I would hope I would have done the right thing. But Jesus would have still made it okay. Jesus would have still made it okay. Oh, I forgot where I was going for a second. So, After royally messing it up, Jesus had to tell Peter that he, he could still love him in that way. Like, he had to go through the exercise. Do you love me? Yes, you know I do. Do you love me? Yes. Oh, come on. You know I, I love you. All right, feed my, feed my sheep then. Tend my lambs. Feed my sheep. Um, so I, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a crazy thing like that just happened, right? Denied Jesus. Jesus builds him back up, and now he's going out on fire, on fire, with, uh, without fear. I don't, I don't think Peter was a fearful person, right? He was a, he was a person that often like, would put his foot in his mouth. You know, they're, all right, hey, there's Jesus, let's get him. He's like, no. <laughs> you know, like he was, I don't think he was afraid. I think he, he acted maybe quickly, but now he's moving forward without fear. And there's no fear in love. Because perfect love casts out all fear. Right? So I, I could tell you, like, when I was this morning, I, I felt a little, a little fear. And not, not like it was overtaking me and I'm shaking and I can't speak. But I was like, 
I don't know if I had enough time to prepare. I don't know if I had enough time to talk about what you want to talk about. And I haven't even gotten to any of the things I typed. <laughs> uh, but God's having his way. You know, and that's what I want. I don't care if I spent like three weeks preparing and this nice three-point sermon. Because my three-point sermon is love God, love others, and love yourself. Because he's coming quickly. You still up there? No. <laughs> yeah. Because he's coming quickly. So a lot of times, and this, I think this is natural, but we're not supposed to be natural. We're supposed to be supernatural, right? Or spiritual. Everybody thinks, and right this moment, you're going to, everything's going to be fine. You're going to go have your, your dinners and your lunches. You're going to hang out with family, uh, or maybe not, or, you know, you, you have your life already figured out. There's a chance that may not happen. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not even, who knows what could happen in the next five seconds, right? There's churches that have had, had terrible things happen. Like somebody could come through this door right now, and we'll be on them because we're ready now, right? But, um, or her, I don't know. We're not guaranteed anything except the present, I think that's such a beautiful picture. Because is God the God of the past? Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> but is he the God of the future? Yeah, he's the God of the future. But he's the I am. That means he's the now. He's the everything. And we have to encounter him right now. We can't say... You know, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to pray more. If God's put it in your heart that you need to pray more, you better start praying right now. Right? Like right now as I'm talking. Go ahead. You can do it. Uh, if God's telling you, you know, he, I, he doesn't mess around in certain things, right? You know, he says, if you come to worship me and there's, your brother has something against you, not that you have something against your brother, but if, if you know somebody's got something against you, don't even bring your gift to the altar, Go and be reconciled. That's how important reconciliation. Because what if you think, okay, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm going to go to my brunch. Boom, car accident. You're in heaven. <laughs> right? But uh, you didn't do what you were asked to do. And how's that conversation going to go? <laughs> Why should I let you into heaven? Uh, because of Jesus. Well, what happened, what happened with that scenario? What happened there? Right? You're going to have to give an account. The Bible says... Here's something scary that God doesn't play around. We're going to have to give an account for every useless, idle, fill in the blank, every idle word that we speak. So an off-the-handle comment, an off-the-handle response to a scenario, to a situation. Something happens, you're like, oh, crud. Or something worse, you know. Um, we're going to have to give an account for that. <laughs> You want to have that conversation with Jesus? I don't know. That's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> I got enough stuff. I'm going to have to talk to him. But thank, thank you, Lord. You know, First John 1, 9. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you don't know that, it says that he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's, there's something right there, right? You can do all the... If I mess up right now, in some way, I don't want to name anything, but if I just mess up right now, I can come to Jesus right now in the present. I can, with a sincere heart, ask him to forgive me, and it's done, uh, which is so awesome, right? If you struggle with an addiction of anything, like I have, if you struggled with that in the past, I'm free today, but I've struggled with addiction in the past. It, I, it was getting really familiar with 1 John 1, 9. You know, I was like, all right, God, here I am again. Lord, please forgive me and strengthen me and help me move forward. Here I am, Lord, please forgive me and strengthen me and help me to move forward. Um, you know, there's also an aspect of repentance, right? You have to, like, stop doing the same things and start going this way. But his forgiveness is in the present. He's found in the present. It says, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Seek him now while he may be found. We're not guaranteed later. So if, you're listening, if you can hear my voice and God puts you here, 
or on the YouTube or Facebook, or maybe you'll watch this 10 years from now. That'd be crazy. I have, I have, a, I have a thought that 10 years from now, somebody will say, I saw that thing you did, you know, back in, in COVID, and it, it really spoke to me. You know, like sometimes you watch YouTube videos and you see, and it's like, whoa, man, that was like 10 years ago, but it's just like, boom, it hits, oops, sorry, it hits really deep. <clears throat> um, and, and a lot of these things we're doing now are being recorded. That's crazy. Like we had a little more liberty before, but now we have to make sure we're <laughs> saying everything right. No, just kidding. <laughs> I don't have to worry about what I'm going to say because my eyes are on God. And that is huge. That's about knowing him in the present. That's the fear of the Lord, Right? I came to this realization, I've shared this before, that God knows what I do. He knows what I think. He knows what I see. He knows why I think and think certain ways, right? So for me to ignore a pattern of thinking, that's a sin, right? He knows why I'm, he knows, oh, oh there's that thing, and you, you did that. You, you know, even Jesus talks about, if you even think about hating somebody, it's like murder, you know, if you lust after a woman, it's like adultery. So a thought life is very important because what's born in your, in your mind will oftentimes find a way to, to happen. It'll, it'll, it'll find out. <laughs> it'll come to fruition, which is so important, right? With the things we think in our mind, if, I, if I'm using thought patterns that cause me to sin or, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the wrong things, I'm going to end up doing those wrong things. But if I think about things the way they ought to be, um, if I even just acknowledging that things ought to be this way, and then you believe it, and you proclaim it, and you prophesy it, like that's what you were saying, Jen, earlier. Um, I think it was about being a child of God, right? Yeah. Love. Okay. No Love. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so love, even as you say things and prophesy, you're, you're changing your, your thoughts, the way you think. Uh, and that has so much power, right? It says we have the mind of Christ. Like, like what? We have the mind of Christ? And you may just put it on the shelf right there. I have the mind of Christ. Okay, cool. Thanks. You know. But when you're struggling, when you're struggling with a, something and maybe an addiction, when you're struggling with somebody at work, a relationship, when you're struggling with, with pride or some other sin, and you look at it as Christ would look at it, there's power there. There's power. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. There's power in thinking the right thoughts. And so if you think the wrong thoughts, you can put those on the altar and say, Jesus, help me, and he'll help you. And you don't have to fear coming to him, right? It's like, like I, I gave you that example before, like I did something, maybe I took something, you know, I wasn't always a pastor, you know, and I still mess up today, so I'm not saying anything like that. But, you know, like I took something or, you know, that I shouldn't have, I stole some candy or, you know, and getting caught. You know, there's often fear in going back to the authority, right? So, you know, if I got caught and I now I have to face my mom or my dad, that's a scary thing. Or I actually, I actually got arrested. Um, it was pretty. It was kind of innocent, but not not at all. Um, I was there was a lot of cars, and I was about 15, 16, and uh, my me and my buddy were riding bikes, and there was uh, one of the. There were like cars to be, uh, like used for a demolition derby or something. And there was like keys on the ground, and we're like, hey, so. I don't know. I sat in. I vroom, like, oh, it's crazy. It's just a car here with keys, and it starts. So I, I start, start going around just the parking lot. I had no intention of stealing the car, right? But I was just you know, kind of being naive and and dumb and having uh, wrong fun. Uh, but anyway, there was a security guard that I remember seeing, but he was like asleep the whole time. And then I guess he woke up and called the police because I got arrested. <laughs> Uh, I didn't get charged with anything. It was more of a slap on the wrist. But it, it was kind of a wake-up call. That season of my life was like one of my wake-up call seasons. Um, but uh, my parents were mad. <laughs> Rightfully so, right, if that happened to you, Bobby. No. 
or any of my kids, I, I would probably have some words, right? Um, but anyway, it was it was it was a uh, it was a good it was good because God ter- used that part of my life to show me things like don't do this. That's not a good idea. Um, so you know, I probably wouldn't be standing here if I kept stealing cars and kept getting in cars driving away. I'd probably be in a prison or something, you know. But if I was supposed to be a pastor, then I would be a pastor in there one day, you know. So God has a way of re- redeeming things. <clears throat> um, but where I was at with that is, oftentimes. If we mess up, we're fearful to go back and deal with it, right? So, like, uh, I'll even use from this morning's prayer, too. Like, Peter, you know, if he would have just said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, you know, you know I, I'm just going to, here I am, take me, too. Like, can you, I guess that's what he would have had to do, right? To get away from my Jesus, he'll be like, get him, too, right? And he would have, to, he wouldn't get his sword that time, right? Like, he would have done it differently. Um. But he welcomes us. He, he, he invites us in. Like when we mess up, he said, give me your garbage. This is a kind of a crude way to put it, but give me your garbage and I will help you. Give me, he wants, he wants our garbage, our sin. He wants all of our cares. Um, and he exchanges that for, for, for beauty. You know, so I, I, I'm confident that everybody sitting here that's struggling with something, you can have exchange with Jesus in the present right now that can make it beautiful. Um, and maybe it's just the seeds getting planted right now, and it's going to grow later. Because that's what springtime is, right? The seeds get planted, and boom, they, they pop up. <clears throat> so back to Song of Solomon. He's talking to the bride. Oh, my dove. Look at that. Like, the way Jesus is seeing the bride, like, he sees us in, like, he sees us in the future tense, right, where we're the perfected bride of Christ. He knows what we're going to look like uh, without spot or wrinkle, and that's kind of hard to think because we got spots and wrinkles today. <laughs> but he sees us as, he sees us through, through his blood. He sees, sees us through, 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 through his righteousness, and he calls us to the secret places of the cliff. Right? This is different. Like Moses like, hey God, I want to see your glory. Show it to me. Show me your glory. And he's like, okay, here you go. But in this story, in the Song of Solomon, it's the other perspective. The bridegroom is telling to the bride, come away. I want to see you in the secret place. Let me, hear, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. Your voice is sweet. Your face is lovely. Can you imagine? Can you receive that right now? Like, when you come into the Lord's presence, he says, your voice is sweet. Your face is lovely. He loves you. He's pleased with you. Like, the fact that you showed up here on a Mother's Day, you could be having a nice little brunch. But you came here to be in the presence of God. Like, he loves that. He loves you. He is so pleased. Because you could have been doing something else, but you chose him instead. And even if you, you may be here because you did it to honor a mother in your life, that's honoring to God too. Oh, I didn't get to anything here. <laughs> yeah, so would you just receive that? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more, and, and Daniel can mosey on up when you're ready. That God wants to change your life, and he's coming. He's coming. Not, he's, just not, he's not just coming for the world one day. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. He wants you. He's not just like, oh, I'm going to, I guess I got to take this person in too because they said the prayer. Uh, I guess I got to take this. No. He sees you. You said that prayer. And what is that prayer? When God showed up to your life and you realized that you needed him. You realized what Jesus did for you. He took all that garbage and if it's, if it's right now, he's taking all your garbage right now. 
and putting it in a moment in time where he died for all the sins of the world. And if you receive that, you receive new life. So it's a magic trick right there. Take all the garbage, all the sins of the world were put on him, and you receive new life. I I just want you to just close your eyes for a minute. He says, seek me while I may be found. But you closed your eyes. And ask him to reveal himself to you. Ask him to show you the next step. Ask him to give you strength. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to welcome you in. If you've never received the Lord Jesus. He says, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. And if you believe in what he did for you, if you believe what I said, that he's able to take all your garbage, and what's here's the crazy part of the magic trick, all your garbage from then... And he's like, oh, I know all the things you're going to do, boom, then too. If you receive that and believe that in your heart. And he didn't just take it and die. No, he took it. The man who existed with God before time and all eternity came down and was born of Mary. And he lived a perfect life. He did some pretty amazing things. But it was the goal to have an encounter with you and take the things, all the garbage away. To take your sins away. To take the wrong thinking away. To take the the fear away. To take hatred away. To take my joy riding in the cars away to take some really ugly things I did away. And the ugliest thing you did, he came to take it away. And if you'll receive that and believe that God then raised him up from the dead and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he's Lord and that surely he's coming quickly because you don't know what's going to happen even one minute from now. And if you receive that, something glorious will happen. And maybe you need to just re-receive it right now and something glorious will happen right now. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you the ability to overcome. He'll give you the ability to love even when you don't even think it's possible. Your neighbor, yourself, and God. And uh, if, you, if you want that and it's your first time or you're redoing it, would you raise your hand? Amen, amen, amen. And I, I would be amiss. And I, if you know the Lord... I'm sure you would want that anyway, right? So would you stand with me? We're going to send one more song just to worship him. But God, you're so good. I thank you. I just thank you, Lord. Like this, this plan, this purpose, this, this whole, you make sense of it all, God. And so like, that's why I have to go back to you and I'm thankful for you, God. I'm thankful that I know your love is better than wine. I'm thankful, God. Lord, and I just pray you would uh, empower us, God. Empower us, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual, in the supernatural, God. Empower us to overcome the enemy. (laughs) Empower us to, to spend more time in your presence. Empower us to spend more time in prayer. Empower us to spend more time in your word. Empower us to increase our fellowship and build your church, God. Build your church, Lord. 
<laughs> Let the trumpet sound. Let the trumpet sound. Oh, Jesus. Draw near to me, for I have drawn near to you. Respond to you. Draw near to me, Lord. Draw near to me, for I am drawn near to you. just thank you so much God thank you for the gift of salvation the gift of repentance that don't always come easy thank you but it's a gift thank you for the gift of your grace God thank you for the gift of mothers thank you for the gift of seeking you Yeah, Lord, thank you. You're full of gifts. Thank you for the gift of your presence. Lord, would you just set us ablaze, God? Let the trumpet sound in Zion. That the Lord is coming quickly, quickly. Yeah. So in the name of Jesus, I just bless you. Ask him to keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, to lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.